Hello, and thanks for tuning in to Powell Software's Welcome to the New Normal video podcast series. Powell Software develops digital workplace solutions that improve the employee experience, helping companies write their own future of work by leveraging the talent of their entire workforce. I'm Tony Todd from Rumeur Public in Paris, and in this series, we are speaking with business leaders, thinkers, uh, visionaries, to explore the megatrends, the ecosystems, and the technology that are shaping the way we live and shaping the way we work as the economy recovers and as we emerge into the new normal. Our guest today is Marc Diwan. Hi, Marc. Hi, Tony. Thanks for having me. Uh, Marc is a business operator who's been working uh, for 27 years in technology with a big focus on startups, helping them grow and go to market quickly and successfully. He's also Chief Business Officer at Checker, which is a people a data platform that's disrupting the trust and safety business, which is a fast-growing segment meeting the needs of the gig economy. We're talking about ride-hailing apps like uh, Uber, uh, delivery services like Deliveroo um, and uh, DoorDash, uh, giving these companies quick and accurate background checks uh, on the drivers, on the delivery people, but also helping these companies know their customers uh, better. Mark, you're an expert on working practices and you have your finger on the pulse of the future of work. What have you seen in the last year? What's, uh, what ev evolution have you seen in working practices? Tony, I, ha I have seen a clear shift uh, in the way that the companies are really um, uh, working today and uh, with the digital transformation and the uh, ease of use and easy to access to solution like Powell Software is really giving to the companies the opportunity to fulfill the need of their workers because the workers are demanding a different work environments. Working from anywhere is today the norm, which was not the norm back in 10 years or 15 years ago. The consumerization of the enterprise solution is another big shift that enable the companies today to offer enterprise solutions that have that ease of use, ease of deployment, and offer to the workers from anywhere to really work like they are in the company and in, uh, in winding their organization. Um, obviously, Mark, a lot of these changes were already in motion before the pandemic. Uh, the cloud services have been around for a while. Um, Services like Zoom, Microsoft Teams weren't invented uh, with the pandemic, but obviously the pandemic has been an accelerator. Uh, how much of an acceleration have you seen? I've seen a tremendous acceleration. I mean, when, when you go back before the pandemic uh, and after, the pandemic has really forced all the C-level people in the organization that to stay relevant during this pandemic year and to continue to operate as an organization, they need absolutely to evolve and to really you know, deploy technology to enable their organization to work from anywhere. They had no other choice. I believe I will probably characterize the shift like almost five to 10 years acceleration in the future of work. There isn't one single company, regardless the size of the organization, regardless they have a strong IT department or not, today have access to technology to offer to their employees to be able to work from anywhere. And actually, I'm working for a West Coast uh, US-based company. And today, I am in Cannes, and I'm working like I am in San Francisco. It's a time difference for sure, but technology, I have access to all the technology that anyone from the company have access to, and I can continue to do my work like I used to do it when I used to work in the office. Thanks, Mark. That's a really interesting point. Now, Checker, your company, is a mission-driven company that has diversity and inclusion at the heart of everything that you do. Can you explain that to me and tell me how uh, events in the last year have driven improvements in diversity and inclusion? I have seen clearly a tremendous progress uh, in the United States and even here in Europe uh, that the companies feel the uh, really the need and the push from the new generation, I really believe here, to make sure that they clearly fulfill their social responsibility. What I mean by that, I mean that if you are a company, you need your employees to be representative of the community that you are operating in. Either you are in France, you are in the US, or you are a global operator. It's really important that you should put diversity and inclusion at the core 
of really you mission. You ha- you mentioned the okay, checker. Checker, it was one reason why I have decided to join the company. The company has really a strong, strong mission and actually being known in the US mainly for the mission here. We are working with the what we call the gig economy and helping the flexible workers, the people that want to take it to work whenever they want uh, to be able to either drive a customer or potentially help someone to shop. And those people, usually they are coming from... Uh, you know, a low income uh, type of uh, uh, demography. And those people in the US, so if you don't know, one third of the population has a criminal record. So you cannot exclude one third of the population from the workforce. This is the reason why Checker has this mission driven. And to give you an example, as a company, 5% of our workers have criminal record. Has an example of diversity and inclusion. but. Diversity, it's not only a gender diversity. As I said earlier, when we think about the community that we are operating in, we are really taking it very seriously at Checker and also have a lot of assets to help to educate the companies how they can potentially you know, implement the policies that we have there in making sure that you have you know, a broad representation of your workers that should be basically you know, the reflection of the community where you are in. It's a gender, it's race, it's color of skin, it's religion, it's people with criminal record because you don't need necessary if you are working in kind of warehouse and you are alone to have someone that uh, need to have basically you know, a clean criminal record as an example. So the company is doing a really amazing job uh, on that front. And for anyone that wants to learn more about that, go just to our websites or just email me, and I will be able to provide you all the white paper and all the materials that we are using to educate our customers to really improve their diversity and inclusion um, uh, to reflect the community where they are operating. Mark, what you're telling me is really uh, interesting, and it makes me think that uh, technology is uh, becoming more and more the principal driver of achieving the ambitions of uh, diversity and inclusion uh, policies. Do you think that's the that's right? Is 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 technology key to getting it right? I believe the technology can be a fantastic enabler. Uh, we need just to be careful, okay? Because we are talking about people, okay? And 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 the people they are really the most important asset of most of the companies and and, and really important for our society. Let me tell you why I think technology can really enable a lot of companies to improve their diversity and inclusion ratios. Technology doesn't have any bias. Technology will select the resume, will basically uh, help you to implement certain processes, will help you to really guide your leaders that are responsible to recruit people here in order to comply with your policy. And your policy, um, you might have really strong desire to improve your DNI and the technology, like you know, Checker and other technology, can easily help you to reduce that level of bias. We are all human. We have the tendency to really be leaning toward working with the people that look like like us. Okay, and it's not the right way. That means the right way to do it is to be open to anyone from any background. And the technology today can can do a tremendous uh, can have a tremendous impact on how the companies are really improving their di- diversity and inclusion ratios. When we talk about diversity and inclusion, we often think about um, um, uh, race, uh, gender, uh, color, etc. One of the groups that, uh, in my experience, have had a really tough time during the pandemic are Generation Z, the really young people trying to get onto the jobs market. How can we be more inclusive uh, of that demographic? Actually, this is the future. This is the future generation that uh, will use the technology that uh, you know we are thinking about developing today. The generation Z, for me, has a different demand and a different expectation from the uh, workforce perspective. I will give you just some staggering number. There is one stat that's really stuck in my head. In the US. Uh, 65% of the Generation Z has a strong aspiration to have flexible work. You've heard about this passion economy as an example. That means you might potentially do your 35 hours or 40 hours working for the company, and you might be an artist 
or a musician, and you would like to offer that skill to all the, all the people that can enjoy it, and you can monetize that. So this is what I mean by flexible workforce, and I believe that this new generation uh, needs a different kind of technology to enable them to be able to be productive at work when they're working for the company and have access as well to consumers or to, can, to people like them to be able to monetize their skill sets. Mark, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us today. Thank you, Tony, for having me. Thanks. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We'll be back in two weeks' time. Uh, don't forget to uh, follow us on uh, YouTube, and you can look out for our audio podcast series on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts, and uh, on SoundCloud as well. Thanks very much, and see you next time.